हेलो ऑल राइट गाइज वी आर लाइव चलो लेट्स बिगिन so hey everyone i'm harshal jain your mentor at geeks for geeks and in this video we are going to create a react js application basically it's going to be in next js and uh, we are going to create a simple project okay don't get your expectations too high uh, it going it's going to be a very simple project where we are going to have an interface in react js okay and here we are gonna say that if i give you a prompt suppose i have a image okay suppose it's a normal image i want to convert this image to black and white what can i do i can simply give a prompt i want to convert this image to black and white now my ai will handle things okay so i am not creating the ai ai is uh, like we are, we are going to use the api provided by different different platforms okay you can use dali ai or you can use other api services we are going to use one free api service and which i'm going to explain you right now and uh, it's giving us free credits for some usage so it's like uh, uh, for free stuff for this project free stuff would work for a few prompts we can do this and uh, if you find some other apis then that's also great okay my task is to help you understand how you can integrate that api which provides you ai capabilities to your next year's application this is going to be the purpose of our project okay so i'll just draw the diagram again i'll explain you with the help of figure so that you will understand things again okay uh, viraj bhai namaste namaste aryan <laughs> namaste okay so let's begin uh, i'll i'll just open things in browser also okay so i have started my application and here you can simply see that here i'll just get some options so let me just check if i have proper images or not so yes uh, basically what we are going to do is uh, we are going to give a few proper prompts and uh, like there are different different prompts which i can give okay suppose uh, i'll i'll do some image by geeks for geeks suppose this was the image okay so if i click on open so this is the image which i provided now here if i describe something i'll give a description okay uh, i i can i think uh, i have to change the api but let me just try that okay if there is an issue we'll fix that so i'll just say that remove the b a c c k g r o u n d okay let's try that so if i click on try and i think it won't work because the api is exhausted but yeah i'll use it the separate one okay don't worry sir can we do side by side with you uh, i would suggest that i would provide you the source code so it's better you can try to understand that okay right now it's not working maybe the api is exhausted anyways i used it for a lot of times that's why so yeah you can see it's exhausted anyways what would actually happen it by providing this prompt it would simply uh, give me the image which has removed background okay so how can i do this for this simple thing we are using the photo uh, api okay let me just uh, recall its name photo room api okay so photo room api is a ai based platform which is used for image enhancement so we're going to use their api into our next year's application okay i hope the logic is clear again i'll just uh, uh, draw things in excalibur so that it's better to understand okay yeah here i'll draw things uh, okay i'll explain it here so first of all what we are going to do is we're going to take api from what okay we're going to take api from what either you can create your own api okay some people do that they train a model in python right if you know python then you would be training a machine learning model which basically enhances your image right different kind of enhancement like background removing or uh, you can also enhance your uh, like texture quality you can upscale the image or different kind of things you can create that kind of machine learning model a lot of tutorials on youtube are available for that if you are trying to create your own model but what we're going to do is we are going to use existing api okay so i'll just uh, write it here so yes existing api okay api service this api service gives us what image enhancement capabilities image enhancement 
okay image enhancement capabilities okay which api why the way we are using so i'm just gonna go there i'm just gonna type photo room api because this is a free api service that's why we are using this but if you are uh, someone who knows uh, better services and uh, like uh, uh, we we can use google's gemini but right now it's not working properly they have uh, just uh, uh, I think they have removed the service for a while for image enhancement but yeah in future you can use Gemini API which would be totally free similar approach would be there you have to just look at the documentation and you can do the similar approach but for now this is the free API service which we are going to use this API service would help us to enhance the image okay I hope you got this so this is photo room and uh, you can choose other uh, platforms also uh, you can just uh, search for free image enhancement APIs if you are just making it a small project like me okay like this project but yeah if you want to make things in a bigger scale I would suggest that you please purchase the uh, premium model of these okay right now we're going to use the free uh, model just to do things okay but yeah if you are doing things on large scale if you want continuous image enhancements you have multiple images then obviously you have to purchase things because this is costly okay yeah, image enhancement operation is costly so yeah in future you might have to purchase this but for now I know only the react part till now the next year is not done by my side so I can do yes definitely you can do this because uh, there is no uh, specific thing which uh, special thing which you must know in next year although uh, the setup part is different in next year if I compare it with react just little bit different like uh, in uh, react just you type the command npx create react app right so in next year we use the command npx create next app and in react js we have uh, we have app.js file right similarly in uh, next js we have the page.tsx file we're going to use typescript although no typescript code would be used just chill if you just know javascript that's only what you need and react js okay if you don't know typescript that's fine if you don't know next js that's also fine okay things are going to be very easy for you you would see the code and you would understand yeah it's similar to react just nothing is different okay the logic is exactly same you can just convert your code to react just that's also fine you would understand things okay don't worry about that the code is almost same as react just little bit uh, setting apart is different and uh, uh, yeah we're going to use typescript in next JS. okay that's that's what we're going to do but nothing is different you would see the code and you'll understand it okay the logic is this i can implement this in plain react js with the javascript okay that's also fine okay or you can follow my approach next js and ta uh, typescript why we are using next js and typescript because react js uh, website itself recommends to use next js okay that's why we use next js okay so here uh, you can you can just visit this and you can check out the free version which we're gonna use okay we'll get some credits the credit sometimes might be more for you sometimes might be less okay I checked this website a uh, few days ago there were more credits and right now I think they are providing less credits similarly is with open API or different kind of websites which gives you AI based APIs okay so uh, you have to check what kind of credits how many credits you are getting to use their service okay we are gonna get free credits here so uh, basically let's try to log in okay so i'll just log in and uh, I'll, I'll just sign out with this account i'll just log in with a fresh account let's see how many credits do i get this time okay so i think this would be okay i'll just choose this account okay so this is a gmail account you can choose your own gmail account and you can use as many gmail accounts you want that's totally up to you okay so uh, yeah you can see that's done and what you can do is here you can just type api dashboard okay api dash b o a r d okay so this is kind of a hidden page uh, so you can write it this way api dashboard and you can see enable the photo room api for free okay so this is something which you have to look for uh, you have to find the api service I found it so I just have shown you easily so yeah they are asking some basic questions so you can just write anything okay uh, I would say suggest that you can type any email okay so I'll just type this email okay so I'm a company and I'll just type some random text okay and what's my role so I'm the CEO okay and uh, fib anything you can just select anything this is just general information they are asking for us and then submit okay so you can see that it's done now you can see that we got the api key please don't use my api key 
please don't use it okay uh, you can generate your own api key and then do whatever you want okay please don't use my api key else the plan would get exhausted okay so uh, yeah i hope you followed the approach and you would know now you can generate api key okay so we're gonna generate API key, we generated the API key and we're going to use this API service into our Next.js application. Okay, into our Next.js application, Next.js or uh, you can do the same thing in normal React.js or React.js or you can use plain HTML, CSS, JavaScript also. This would be exactly same. If you know how to integrate APIs in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, then you would understand the code. Else you can just follow my Next.js and React.js also. This was this was always better. Okay, Next.js or React.js using these two things. Okay, so yes, we are going to use Next.js only, which is modified version of React.js, by the way. Okay, so I hope you got the basic idea. Now we are going to implement it. Okay, so first of all, we have to create a basic page. Okay, we have to create a basic page like this. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a basic application. Okay, basic application. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, create a folder here. Okay, I'll just create a folder here. And let me just name it as image. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll just rename this image enhance. Okay, something like that. So inside this, I'll just create a project. So I'll just open it with VS Code. So now if you don't have VS Code, what I would suggest is download VS Code. You can just search for, okay, uh, I'll just decrease the size of my video. Okay, now I think, yes, more visible. Okay, so to download VS Code, you can just search for VS Code and you can just download the VS Code and then you can install this setup. Okay, first you need to download the setup and then you can install the setup. Uh, while installing, just make sure you check all the check boxes, then you are good to go. Okay. And one more thing which is needed is Node.js. Okay. So you can just download and install Node.js. Similarly, just click next, 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 and then it would be done. Okay. So you can just download the Node.js and then it would be done. Okay. So now after this, uh, you would have a folder here. Okay. So here I'll just right click open with code. Okay. And, uh, what I would do is I'll, I'll just, uh, Go to terminal, okay, and to create a Next.js application, we simply type the command npx create next app, okay. You can use the same for React.js also, create React app, but I'm going to use it for Next.js. So create next app at the rate latest, okay. So latest version of uh, Next.js. And here you can see it's asking the project name. So I'm just going to say that, okay, let's name it as, okay, I'm just going to name it as photo, photo AI. Okay. Something like that. Okay. I'm just going to name it anything. Uh, you can just name it whatever you want. Now we're going to use TypeScript. So I'll just mark it as yes. Although there's nothing special, which we use in TypeScript in this case for today. But yeah, you must know TypeScript in future. It's always beneficial. Today we are not going to use uh, TypeScript properly. It's just like, yeah, we have just created a setup a project in TypeScript, which I generally do in Next.js. Okay. Now I don't want to uh, use, uh, okay. I want to use ESLint. It's like checking for errors. I don't want to use Tailwind. Yes, SRC. Yes, App Router. No for Alias. Okay. So you can see that a project would be created like this. Okay. Perfect. Now guys, it's going to take a few seconds to actually set up this project. You can see, I'll just zoom it a bit more. Yes. Control and plus sign. It would just zoom it things. Okay. So you can see that it's almost there, almost there. Perfect. So you can see that page.tsx is here. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to remove everything from here and I'm just going to create a division. Okay. So just create a division. That's it. Okay. And here I can just say that, uh, AI image generator, something like that. 
okay i'm just gonna name it something like that so that i can check the thing so you can see that it's done okay now to start this application we simply need to type the command which is npm run dev okay npm run dev so i'll just type the command npm run dev okay so it would start the application and uh, okay i'm sorry uh, I, I need to go inside this directory okay yes now we are inside this directory photo ai which is our project so now here we can just type the command npm run dev so you can see that it's going to start okay so guys here what we are going to do is uh, we are going to type localhost 3000 and it's going to start so you can see that yeah we have the basic website okay so now we have to generate a layout so this is going to be a very simple layout okay don't worry about things Okay, so here we're gonna have a very simple layout. So I'm just gonna say that, okay, I'll just keep things inside main only, main container. You can create it in a normal division also, that's also fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a class name and uh, styles dot main. So if you're using plain React.js, the styling process is different. Okay, I hope you get this. But in next yes, we simply create a file, styles file like this, page.module.cs. This is by default available. If you know next yes, you'll know. But in the React.js, we have styling little bit different way. Although we all we again have a file uh, styles.css, there we write the style and then we implement it. Okay, in React.js is different. In Next.js, it's the way. This is the way. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is uh, I, I'm I'm just gonna say that we have the h1 tag. Okay, we have the h1 tag, which has the span tag. Okay, AI image enhancer. Now we are going to have a division named as main container. Okay, main container. Now inside this container, we're going to have the h1 tag. That's it. Okay. Now, guys, here uh, we're going to have some containers. Okay. The top container is for containing two images. What two images? Our image and the generated image. Okay. So this container is going to contain two images. Okay. Now, after this, uh, we're going to have an input field also. Okay. So we're going to have an input field which would allow us to input the file okay which would which would allow us to select the file okay so we're gonna have a button first of all okay so uh, I'm, I'm just gonna create a function const handle file change okay handle file change and uh, this function is going to be an arrow function okay so we're going to create a simple arrow function and it's going to get an event Okay, I'm just going to give the type as any since we are using type script, I'm just giving type as any. Okay, so in normal JavaScript, if you are using normal JavaScript with React JS, you don't need to give the type, right? You just need to write it as it is. Okay, but with TypeScript, since we have allowed TypeScript TSX code, we have to give the type also. Okay, so we'll complete this function later on. But yeah, we are going to need this function. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're going to say that we would simply have the input field. Okay, we would simply have the input field and what input field so we're gonna create an input field okay so what i want is as soon as i click on this input field i would open the file manager okay so that i can select a file so type file and i'm just gonna give it an id of file input okay file input and i want to accept only images okay so image i m a g e okay slash and asterisk and after that, I'm just going to say that uh, if I click on this, I want to set things. Okay. I want to set things like this. Okay. To the function. Okay. So this would be fine. Okay. As soon as I click on this, this function would be called. Okay. This function would be there. So what I can do is I can just uh, write things inside this function. Okay. So I'm just going to say that uh, uh, just get the file which you have selected. Okay. Just get the file which you have selected and if there is some selected file then only okay if there is some selected file then only do things so i'm just gonna call the file reader okay to just uh, get the file then what we're gonna do is reader dot on load as soon as the file loads okay, as soon as i get the file i'm just gonna pass it to my container to my container or to my uh, variable okay what variable so i'm gonna get that variable by creating a variable here okay so we're gonna create two variables uh, first variable would be current image this would be the image which i have selected okay with use state okay this would be the image which i have selected okay so what we're gonna do is as soon as i read the image i would pass that image to my variable okay to my hook react js hook that's it okay so now we would have an image inside this hook okay and uh, 
then we are going to convert yes then we are going to convert this as url okay that's it that's it okay so we're going to read the file as url that's it so this is a simple way it would allow us to simply set the image here okay this is the way which we do in react.js or next.js okay now we have set it the image so we'll just go to our website here and uh, you can see you are using okay so it's asking us to use client at the top it's for next.js only okay because we have client based rendering and server based rendering so you can see that as soon as, as soon as I click on this, you can see that I get this pop up. Okay, so as soon as I click on this image, you can see that I have selected the image, but this looks ugly. This looks ugly. So what I'm going to do is instead of uh, using the input field, instead of using the input field, I'm going to use a button. I don't want to show things like that. Okay, so what else can I do? I can just say, first of all, uh, display. Okay, sorry, style. Style equals and I'm just going to say display as none. So I don't want to show it here. Okay. I don't want to show it here. Now, how can I select the image? I would simply create a button. Okay. I would simply create a button tag. So button tag B U T T U N. Okay. This button would be containing what text? This button could, would be containing select new image text, right? Select new image text. So you can see that we have created as soon as I click on this button. Okay. I want to open something. Okay. So first of all, I'll just give it some style. Okay, so I'll just give this a class name later on. We'll style this. Okay, and then guys, we are going to say that as soon as I click on this, I want to click on the file input document. Okay, file input document. That means this document. Okay, so that means as soon as I click on this, as soon as I click on this, I want to find the element file input. I would find the element. Then I would simply click on this automatically. This would be done by JavaScript for us. Okay, so let me just close it. So you can see this is the thing. So now if I click on this, so you can see that input container is hidden, but that input container is targeted by the button. So you can see that that's how it works. Okay. So if in future you are going to use this feature, so that's good for you. You'll understand things now in future. If you are implementing some kind of thing. Okay. Image manipulation ke liye konsi library hoti hai? Like Canva ka clone banana hai to like website in which we can edit image, crop, add text. Uh, you have to purchase the API. You can use this photo room API, but yeah, you would have to purchase it. Okay. You can do a lot of things inside this, uh, or uh, there are better options. Uh, you can wait for Gemini API to allow you to use images to modify images, because I think Gemini has paused that feature to modify images, but in, I think soon they would be uh, allowing us to modify images. Okay. So uh, you can do that or you can create your own model. But yeah, if you are looking right now, then you can use photo room API, which we are using. But yeah, you have to get the paid version of that to use it multiple times. And if you're creating a big project, okay, uh, for now, we are using the free version with some credits. Okay, now we are going to come back here and yes, let's check the website. So you can see it looks like this. Okay, perfect. Now guys, after this, what we're going to do is we are going to say that as soon as I select the image, okay, as soon as I select the image, I'm just going to say that if I have the image, then I would show the prompt. Okay. If I have the image, then I would show the prompt. Okay. Uh, what, uh, I'll do one more thing. I'll later on show the image also, but as soon as suppose I select the image. Okay. As soon as I select the image, suppose this is an image. I selected the image. Now I would get a message box what you want to do with this image. Okay. That means I would simply say that if I have the current image, okay, when you would get the current image, when your file is selected, file is set to the current image hook, right? Now you have the current image as soon as you have the current image. Okay. As soon as you have the current image, then we are going to say that if I have the current image, that means it's not null. Initially current image was null. As soon as you click on this input with the help of this button, you selected an image that image has been passed through the current image hook current image hook that means now this is not null this is containing some image that means it contains something now if there is image then you would need to pass the prompt also what you want to do with this image okay so we're gonna say that current image if there is current image then i would simply say ask for the prompt okay ask for the prompt so i'm just gonna say that its class name is suppose prompt container okay and here guys we are gonna say that uh, we're gonna create one hook for storing the description that means the prompt okay the prompt so this would be suppose the prompt right 
prompt okay now uh, i'll come back here i'm just gonna say that as soon as i make the prompt visible what it would show it would show an input container okay this input container would be of type text okay we're gonna provide it some text right it would be containing value of a description hook okay and whatever change i make on this it would simply go to what it would simply go to uh, okay handle change function suppose handle change function okay this function would be created and uh, i think i can give it a placeholder also okay i can give it a placeholder also okay so let's create this handle change function so here itself i'll just create this const handle change function okay and inside this again we are going to provide an event okay event uh, suppose type as any okay here i'm going to provide some event okay here i'm going to provide some event what event whatever text you have written in the input field right whatever text you have written in the input field i'm going to pass that text to the description hook that's it that's it okay so now we're going to have the description also okay so what i have simply done is uh, as soon as i select the image okay let's select an image like this so you can see as soon as i select the image i get the description field i get the description field now i have written something some modification like what remove the background something like that okay right now we the ui is not good we'll make things good okay we'll make it something like this one but yeah right now this is it now we have to show a button also okay so for showing the button we are gonna simply say that uh, we have provided the description now after that we're gonna simply say a button is there and generate image function would be called on clicking of this button okay so const generate image this function would be called okay that's it that's it that's it guys so this function would be called right so you can see that try function would be uh, try button is there if i click on this generate image function would be called okay this function would be called we'll come to this later now let's complete the remaining part which is the both images part okay so you can see you completed which part right now you can see that we completed this input part for selecting image then for uh, entering the prompt we also completed this part now we need to complete the both images part here we are going to show two images one image which you have selected next image would be shown after modification okay after modification so for now we are going to show the uh, current image okay so i am just going to say that if there is current image show the current image that's it okay so let's see so you can see yeah now we are able to see the current image okay and uh, one more thing what we are going to do is later on when we are going to get the generate Im Im generated image we are going to show the generated image okay so we are going to say that if we have the generated image then show the generated image also and one more thing i'm going to show an arrow also okay so by the way right now we don't have the generated image so what we are going to do is we are going to copy this and paste it here and uh, i'm just gonna name it as generated image okay so ge generated image okay so generated image and this would also be g e n e r a t e d okay generated image uh guys for now what we're gonna do is uh we're gonna show some temporary image how we can do that uh i'm just gonna go to pixel okay pick some website we are gonna just gonna show temporary image so that we can get the layout okay so pick some okay i'm just gonna copy this one okay just copy this one this would just give us images okay so here i'll just pass it and similarly here also i'll just pass it okay i'll just pass it and let me just uh, change the size for this one okay let's make it 300 okay let's save it okay so right now what i have shown is i have shown that if i have current image this is the current image and this is the generated image okay suppose so you can see that both are visible okay both are visible now how would i know that which is current image and which is generated image between these two so what i can do is i can just create an arrow just for simple difference okay so i'll just go to hero icons and here i can just search for um arrow if you just search for arrow you'll get a lot of arrows here uh, you can just uh, select this arrow right suppose okay and i'm just gonna say that between these two i'm gonna show an arrow okay between these two i'm gonna show an arrow okay you can see between these two i'm gonna show an arrow but suppose there is no generated image so why would i show this arrow okay so i would simply say that if i have the generated image if i have the generated image then only show the arrow okay that's it okay that's it if i have the generated image then only show the arrow suppose i don't have the generated image okay suppose this generated image is null 
then what you would see you would just see the current image okay you won't see the arrow and you won't see the generated image that's it perfect now that's done now that's done okay so suppose you have generated image okay you have an image which you have generated after that what you can do is you can show a download button also okay you can show a download button also okay so here i have simply created an a tag okay uh, you can use normal link tag which is available in next.js or you can use another tags so on clicking of this tag this would route me to the image url okay whatever is the image okay so suppose now you can see that you have the image if i click on this you can see that it took me to this page now you can just save this image or you can download the image that's also fine okay fine now guys i hope you understood this this is the part now we're going to style this a bit okay let's style this so if it's the styling part it's very easy like uh, it's just normal uh, styling which i have followed and you can follow the same styling okay okay so uh sorry uh, there are some messages let me just check why we provide the type any to event if i work it will work. okay actually i am using typescript and uh, generally a lot of people don't know typescript that's why i have given any type but if you are someone who knows typescript well you have to give the proper type here okay this is just for some people who are just starting with typescript and uh, they are using next.js with me and they are just starting with typescript a lot of people don't know typescript okay but they want to use so yeah just type any you won't face any error else if i if i just remove this you would get type error okay because we are using typescript okay so we have to search for exact type of this event there is some kind of type uh, react fs some kind of type uh, i'm not going to that detail but yeah, you can just search for this what's what could be the type using chat gpt you can find the type but for now i've just given any okay so are you implementing responsiveness in this project this project uh, doesn't need that much responsiveness like if i shrink the size the size is already small we'll see that if we get time that's very easy we'll do that okay can we do this without any prerequisite learning like uh, you need knowledge of react js at least okay and which api we're going to use for image generation so we we are using the photo room api okay perfect okay let's continue guys okay so now guys we have the two things you can see that this is the layout we have to style this first okay we'll style this first right now i'm just showing temporary things later on we'll do this with the help of our api okay right now i'm just showing temporary url okay just so that we can save some energy okay so let's go to page uh, module lot here okay and i'll just remove everything okay and i'll also go to uh, this global css i'll just remove everything so you can see that now our ui looks like this okay very unbalanced okay so we'll first of all say that we don't need any default margin or padding in global css we simply said that so you can see default margin and padding is now gone okay now we're gonna come here and we're gonna say that our jo our main main class would be having minimum height 100 vh and this background color dark purple okay so you can see that this is it okay so if i just uh, save this okay now it would be fine so if i just refresh this yeah now the error is also gone yeah you can see it like this okay perfect now similarly guys we have what uh if you come inside this you can see that this is our main container okay this is our main container we are gonna style this we're gonna say that our main container is treated like a box inside this box everything is shown in flex and in column format okay so i'm just saying that first of all display is flex okay display is flex. that means everything would be row in row you can see everything is in row okay so we have to first of all fix that we want everything in center and flex direction column so i would simply say that and you can see that now everything is in column and we'll just decrease the size now everything would be fine in future okay we'll just decrease the size and it would be fixed don't worry okay now uh, i also want some gap between my items okay so i'll just say there would be gap of 10 pixel between each item so that there is some spacing then after that guys i'm gonna say that it's gonna take fit of 50 percent every time but it's not gonna go below 250 pixel that's it okay so let me just show you this okay so if i just inspect okay and uh, if i just decrease the size you can see that it's a little bit more responsive okay it's a little bit more responsive okay we'll fix that also later on but yeah you can see that yes size is also shrinking and below 250 pixel we don't get a decrease size okay so we have said that okay so almost all devices are more than 250 pixel that's why i have given minimum width 250 pixel okay just a minute guys
Now I'm gonna style the H1 tag, okay, heading. So white color and font family cursive and text lying as center. You can just change the font family, okay. I've just given some fun funky look, okay. You can just change it if you want, okay. And now inside that we have a span tag also, okay. Inside the H1 tag you can see inside this h1 tag we have a span tag also okay so i'll just say that the span tag is gonna have some color okay later on i'll provide this code don't worry guys uh you'll get the source code of my github repository don't worry i'll provide it okay so uh here you can see that it's available it's done okay now we're gonna talk about both images container right now you can see that they are in column formats first of all we have to make them row how we can make it simply give them flex box okay flex design so i'm just gonna say that similar flex design is given but this time flex direction is row only everything is in center there is gap between items and position would be relative why because in future we're gonna use it for inner elements okay so you can see that yeah right now it's like this okay the images are aligned properly okay now uh, you can see that the svg icon is actually gone so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it some width and height so that they look proper okay so you can see so that they look proper okay so guys you can see that they are something like this okay they are something like this uh, now what i want is i want to just say that the images are also going to have some styling okay so images are gonna have some stylings i'm just gonna say that both the images are gonna be aspect ratio one and width would be 50 percent okay so uh, if i just you can see that yeah the width is 50 percent and uh, i can just give them minimum width also if i want i can just say that minimum width would be 230 pixel okay so minimum width would be 230 pixel you can see that's how they look okay and uh, what else i can do is suppose if uh, things go out of the way so i'm just gonna say flex wrap equals wrap okay suppose if things go out of the way uh in future but right now you can see it's like this okay so i'm just gonna say that okay not 50 percent actually 40 percent maybe yeah you can see it looks like this and similarly the let's give it 10 percent maybe uh max width would be 50 pixel okay so that the size of the icon might also change let's see okay so if i just inspect this let's go for a smaller size yeah you can see that the layout is actually not that great yeah we can make it more responsive like this so that if you want you can make it more responsive okay but i think this is also fine till here we can make it more responsive in future our main goal is to run the application properly so first we'll do that if we get time we'll make it responsive also okay little bit more responsiveness is needed so you can make that or you can use chat gpt nowadays everything is ai okay so you can use chat gpt to make design responsive it's not a very big deal okay if you don't know how to make things responsive then please learn the basics of html css javascript you'll understand it okay so uh, this is it now we're gonna style this uh, remaining container so prompt container okay so i'm just gonna say that this prompt container is gonna take the full width 100 percent width of what of this of what of this container of this main container that means if this main container is taking 500 pixel then this prompt container is also going to take 500 pixel okay that's it so you can see that that much amount of space is taken okay now inside this we're going to say that our input container would be styled so i'm just going to give null styles to the input container okay i'm going to say that it's going to take 80 percent of the inner weight some padding some background color would be removed border would be removed outline would be removed text color would be this font would be this so you would see something like it you can see something like this okay now we're gonna come back and you can see that prompt container has border white okay also check that okay and display flex simply makes the input and the button in flex okay in flex okay now similarly we're gonna say that our button it's gonna take the remaining size so i'm just gonna say 20 percent okay and the color would be this background color would be white and border and outline and cursor pointer okay so you can see that this is the this is the input container okay this is the input container perfect now guys uh we are simply going to say that as soon as i select an image okay so this is the button to select the image right select new image so we're gonna style this button okay we're gonna say that as soon as i select this with 30 percent white color pink color background 
and then again some stylings to the button okay so you can see that this is the button okay so yeah this is almost done almost done now we have styled the button also and the prompt container also now last part is remaining i guess uh the download button okay we have to style the download button also so we're just gonna say that the download button it's gonna be in position absolute okay why position absolute i want to show it in top right corner of what of the image container that means i want to show it somewhere here download button that's why in the image container you can see that the image container is having position absolute okay where is it both images you can see position relative i'm sorry position relative inside that we have the download button you can just see that inside the both images container this is position relative and this is going to be position absolute okay that's the way you use things okay so now i'm simply going to say that uh, if i use position absolute okay and i would simply say that it's on top five pixel and from right it's five pixel okay let's see so you can see that it's here okay it's here now what else can you do uh you can just say that some more stylings would be given to this button okay that's it so background color and some padding and some decoration and like that okay so uh, you can see that this is the download button and if i click on this it would take me to this page okay so yeah this is the styling which i have done here and now let me just save it and there is a bit change here in the styling part you can just check this later okay just remove the extra styling which i did right now everything is fine okay everything is fine almost same yeah you can see with the image this is almost same okay so now guys you can see that this is the ui this is the ui perfect now what we are going to do is we are going to simply click on select and suppose if i click on this can see that we have this image okay we have this image on the clicking of this image on clicking of this image uh, uh we have selected the image we are going to give a description suppose something like that remove the bg okay remove the bg okay background as soon as i click on this i want to hit, hit api i'll get an image in response with removed background and i'm going to show that image here okay that's what i want okay so i'll just go to uh, this photo room okay and first of all i'll just copy this api okay and uh, guys there would be different different methods but in next js this is a method here you can simply create a file dot env env dot local okay dot local okay and here i'm just gonna paste this and please don't use my api key and uh, uh, you can just generate it in the initial part of video i have explained how you can do things okay and i'll also provide you the source code so you don't need to worry about the source code also okay the link would be provided in the description when we end this video okay is photo room api free for some credits it's free console log hello developer hello ajay how are you okay let's come back so this is what you have to do i have just created a variable i have just named it as next underscore public underscore image enhancement api key here i have provided my api key okay similarly you can generate your api key in the initial part of video i have explained that you can watch from beginning you will understand that okay so now we have the api key what i go what my goal is so now i'll just go to the website now you'll be able to exp uh, understand things okay so uh api dashboard yeah just scroll down and just click on api documentation this would help you a lot to understand things uh uh, I can just click on API playground. Okay, just go to playground. This would also be better. So here guys, what you need to do is you can see that they have given some explanation and here you have the code. Okay, so I'll help you explain, uh, understand these things. So right now, suppose my enhancement project does background change. Okay, suppose uh, this is this. This was the image. Okay, this was the image. And what you want is you would get some things here also okay some things here also suppose uh this would be the image so you can see that yeah you want to suppose change the background or you want to generate a background okay so i'm some simply gonna give a prompt okay suppose this is the image which i have provided suppose this is the image which i have provided this is my current image okay so in the api when i call the api i'm simply gonna give a prompt okay what prompt make background red okay make background red so if i click on generate 
you can just see that it's going to take a few seconds and you can see that yeah it's made right okay so this is ai generated so sometimes you have to define things more properly but yeah i hope you got this okay and these are some extra parameters i would say that don't uh, play with these or you can play with these extra parameters but right now we are going to focus on the background enhancement okay image enhancement background enhancement right so here uh, we would simply come here and you can see that this is the kind of thing which we get i don't want to go to the get part you can see this is the post request okay this is very important post request so what do you want to do is what do you want to do is here you will get a url this is the url where we're gonna hit our api okay then suppose you want to make a background okay so you can give a prompt okay make background red this is the prompt which i gave okay and these are some settings this is the size which i want in response and this is the padding and uh, this is my uploaded image my current image okay current image and this would be my generated image okay current image generated image okay so this is the kind of things which you need to keep in mind and similar to this i'll create a function okay i'll create a function okay so i'll go to my generate image okay here and here guys what you need to do is here guys what you need to do is you would simply need to first of all say that if there is no description just don't do anything okay if description length is zero then means you don't want to do anything okay and similarly if there is no current image you don't select any image then again you won't be allowed to do anything okay so both things must be there okay you must have a description and you must be having a current image okay now here guys what we're gonna do is uh we are going to give a try and here we are going to give a catch okay so if there is any error we would get that error okay console dot log error okay if there is an error we would get an error okay so now guys we are going to try what we want to try we want to first of all collect the data okay what kind of data this api is taking so just have an eye on this api okay i'm allowing you and you can do anything you want here what you need to do is you have to keep an eye on the api you can see that this is kind of form form simply means wherever you see c url curl and you see form that means this is form data okay so in header part you're gonna provide this in the fetch part you are going to provide this in the form data part you're going to provide this that means we're going to create a form data where we're going to provide these fields okay we're going to provide these fields okay so let's create a form data so this is general things which uh, every javascript developer must know so uh, uh, instead of this what you can do is you can just uh, go to chat gpt or any api any service uh, any ai based service and you can just pass this as a prompt okay to chat gpt chat gpt would explain this how you can convert this to fetch okay let me just show you uh okay let me just check chat gpt okay just a second guys yes so here guys uh i want to convert this to fetch API give a complete function okay just write this and just give it and you would see that you would get a function like this okay so you can see that yeah this would be the similar thing which we're gonna do right now okay similarly we're gonna do things okay so you would get an idea with the help of chat gpt so similarly you can understand things if you are not able to understand the curl part or you're getting the node.js part or you're getting the browser part separate separate types of format is given but yeah you can similarly create your own fetch api with referring this okay so we're gonna do that so let's come back so form data here we're gonna say that uh, into the background prompt we're gonna provide a description right and output size would be suppose i'm assuming this would be the size and padding would be 0.1 okay so this is it now i'm just gonna say that whatever response you get whatever response you get first of all you're gonna convert this image into a blob okay current image current image first of all you are converting your current image into a blob okay uh i'm just gonna say that this would be an async function okay async function yeah so i'm just gonna wait to convert this image to a blob okay 64 bit uh type format okay this is the format for converting image and we are converting 
the image to base 64 okay that's it so it's like a string okay so now we have the image converted to string and we're going to create a blob out of it so to convert the image to a blob we are simply going to say that base 64 response dot blob okay now uh, what is a blob so it's like a again a format where you have divided the image to a pixel format a string format okay that's what a blob is okay and i'm just going to provide this blob to my form data okay so i provided my image blob to the form data that's it okay so now you would check you would come here and you would see that we have provided the padding output size background prompt and also we have provided the image file that's it that's what you want to do now we have everything okay we have provided everything so what you can do is now you can simply call the api okay how you can call the api so first of all where is my api key okay so my api key is available into my dot env dot local file right we have added this to our env dot local file right so we're going to call this api to our page to our page how we can call that we can simply call the api key okay i've just given this type as any because sometimes it can be a number it can be a string whatever it is so there is no conflict since we are using typescript okay so yeah any so here you have simply called your api key that means instead of writing this number this api i'm sorry not a number this uh, this string directly here we haven't we have directly we haven't directly provided this api key here okay we have created a secure variable named as next public image enhancement and there we have provided the key so it's like more secure okay env variable makes things more secure okay that's why i've used that now we have the api key okay now we have the api key let's go to chat gpt and uh, this is the prompt right so here you can see that this is what chat gpt has tried okay this is what chat gpt has tried so we're gonna use that okay so this is going to be our url okay this is going to be a url and this is going to be type of response okay so similarly i'm gonna write my response okay so we have the function complete we have the function complete we are gonna say that uh, we have a variable named as a response okay i'm just gonna await and uh, we are gonna use fetch method for that okay fetch method for that and here guys we're gonna use our url okay so we're gonna use the url which we got that is the photo room edit okay uh, now after this inside this we're gonna say that we have a method as post okay and in the headers part we're going to provide our api key okay we're going to provide our api key its api key is the variable which stores the value of our api key right in the headers we provided the api key right so here you would see that in the header part we provided the api key okay we needed the api key now in the uh, body part we need to provide the form data okay so we're just going to say that in the body in the body you're going to provide the form data that's it guys that's it okay so after this we are gonna say that as soon as you get this as soon as you get this okay as soon as you get this so you're gonna make it you're gonna say that as soon as you get a response if response is not okay that means there is some garbar there is some problem okay so if there is some problem we're gonna convert that response to a text okay we're gonna convert that response to a text okay converting the response to a text after converting that response that error to a text because that error is kind of complicated to read that's why i'm converting to text provided by the api okay this can be any text okay different apis have different text okay so you're just gonna say that you can just show this error okay api request field and you can also throw this error okay that's it perfect now this would be the case once you throw this automatically it would go to the catch part okay that's what throw does okay it would simply go to the catch part with this error okay with this error done and guys after this what we're gonna say is that if everything is okay then we're gonna convert the response image to a blob okay we're gonna get a generated image okay we're gonna convert that image to a blob that's it after that we're gonna say that uh, from that blob from that string of image create a url like you download the image you get a url like this right so i'm simply saying create a local url of the image so that later on we can download that image right so i've converted the image to a url now i would simply set that url to generated image that's it generated image so i'll get a generated image i converted it into a url and i would simply pass it to my hook to my hook this hook now this hook obviously this would be temporary data so i'm just gonna make it null okay now i would make it null okay null initially there is no image you haven't selected any image you haven't gotten any image okay null and what else can you do is you can just say that the type of this would change obviously in future okay so string 
or null okay so generated image in future it would change okay perfect so or else what you can do is uh, it's better you can just give type as any that would also be great okay so you can give both of these type as any later on you can just check out type script rules properly and then you can give the proper types right now i've just given type as any so that kaam ban jayega okay so again if you are a good type script developer don't use any you have to use the proper type like i use string or null okay write that so you can see that that's done and now what we're going to do is we're going to first of all check our application okay so uh, our application has been completed let's check this how it works so here you can see that if i select the image okay i can select any image suppose if i select this image okay and here let's give it a prompt uh remove the b a c k g r o u n d remove the background okay let's try this so as soon as i try this it's going to take a few seconds okay let's wait for a few seconds and after that the part would be done uh i think yes you can see that yeah it's tried to do something okay so you have to give proper prompts with more definition so that it would understand everything you can, instead of this you could have written make my image transparent that would take okay so this is ai i hope you understand this little bit difference in giving the prompts okay so this is it guys and this was the simple application which i have created please give the prompts properly i have given the wrong prompt you can give the prompt like uh make my background transparent okay transparent word would be highlighted things like that okay so uh, that's it so if you want to download this you can click this and you can see it would be downloaded okay so this is the project guys now this is a very simple project and you can just enhance it by creating your own machine learning model for image enhancement then you can use this uh, that would always be better and this is a very simple project and now i'm going to upload this to github okay let's upload this to github so let's go to github.com/slash this is my github profile you can just type the github name github.com/vira8j014 this is the url if you type this url you would be taken to my profile okay you can follow me here if you want and you can check out my other projects also so here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a new repository okay and let's create this repository i'm just going to name it as photo enhance api okay api okay photo enhance api and uh, i'm just going to click on create repository okay and i'll just upload the code there okay i'll just upload the code there just wait for a few seconds and i'll upload it hi bro sorry for late it's okay <laughs> uh, the video would be available in future so you can watch that okay it's okay can i create the plagiarism checker using chat gpt plagiarism checker no i think you cannot uh, build that properly because like uh, first of all you would have to purchase their api open ap open ai api is right now not free when i created the old video of uh, create your own chat gpt with open ai api a few days ago i took a live session at geeks for geeks main channel at that time the api was free with some credits but right now the chat gpt api is not free so first of all you would have to purchase that that's a big thing and uh, i don't think so you would be able to do that properly because yeah you would have to try that okay you would have to try that but with free part it's gone the free api part is gone and with paid part i'm not going to do that <laughs> okay i'll just search about it can we build some kind of application like that uh, by the way in the upcoming sessions we're going to make a project uh, which is like grammarly okay for checking things using ai based checker again it would be api but yeah you can create your own machine learning models and just search how you can deploy machine learning models uh, using fast api in python that would do the same job okay but we are using ready made apis by other companies okay so i'll just copy this i'll just upload the code okay just wait okay guys so now the code has been uploaded so if you want to check the source code what you can do is you can just visit my github profile what you need to do is you simply need to type github.com/vira8j014 this is my github profile 
and later on in the comment section also we'll provide this okay you'll get the source code so in the repositories guys you would simply see we have photo enhance api okay photo enhance api so you can just simply click on this and you would get the source code okay it's available here we'll provide this in the description or comment section later on right so guys i hope you understood this video this project is <laughs> complete and you get some credits right now you can see that uh, if i if i go if you want to check the credits what you can do is and just go to api dashboard and here you would get the credits okay 10 out of 10 that means i can use it for some images okay maybe in future this might increase or this might not be free so you might have to find some other alternative source okay because this happened with me when i taught you how to make chat gpt using open ai api but now that api is not free so yeah similar things might happen with other apis like photo room so you have to find other apis like uh, for example suppose if you are someone who wants to make chat gpt so you can use gemini api okay you would get free api from gemini and it's for infinite use so you can use that Okay, you can just search about Gemini API. You'll get a lot of interesting stuff with that. Okay, so just search about it, Gemini API. So it's like I hope you know what's Google's Bard. So Google's Bard is using Gemini API. So that's free. You can use that. Okay, in some cases, text generation and P2P chat like that. Okay, so I hope you understood this video, and I will see you in the next one in the upcoming sessions. We are gonna create some more projects for people who want to integrate React JS or Next JS with the ai generators apis like this okay so till then see you have a good day the code is available here you can check out this report okay chalo bye bye